All of Us Strangers is out in theaters, written and directed by Andrew Hay, starring Andrew Scott, Paul Mescal, Claire Foy, and Jamie Bell. Uh, it's based on a Japanese novel, loosely based, um, titled Strangers, which I have not read, uh, and it was marketed as a sort of melancholic, sad, gay romance film, which it is to an extent, uh, but that's just, I think, that's just a smaller component of a movie that primarily is a contemplative, introspective, uh, incredibly poignant and haunting exploration of loneliness uh, and the person trying to come to grips with uh, with lost time, lost conversations, uh, with things unsaid that cannot be said anymore. Andrew Scott plays Adam, uh, a gay writer living alone in a strangely empty building in London where most of the apartments are still empty as people haven't moved in yet. One night there's a knock on the door and it's his only neighbor, Harry, uh, played by Paul Mescal. And, you know, he's also clearly a gay man. He shows up drunk uh, and explains he he is seeking company. Uh, he's, he wants conversation, companionship, perhaps something more. Adam politely refuses and locks the door. He then visits his childhood house where he lived with his parents um, who died in a car accident when he was 12. And unexpectedly, he finds them there, um, unchanged from the last time. He saw them still locked in their 1980s selves, still living in the house, which looks basically just as it did when, when, uh, when Adam was young. He has a conversation with them and then he sort of, for the rest of the film, he goes back and forth between visiting them and having all these conversations that he never got to have, including him coming out as gay to his parents and staying in the London apartment, but deciding to give Harry a chance to try to make that into a meaningful connection, meaningful relationship. So as he's trying to fix the past, he's also working on himself in the present, opening up to another person. Um, so as I said earlier, haunting, poignant, uh, very sad throughout, but also very, very good. It has a powerful atmosphere created by the cinematography of the film, the heavy use of close-ups on characters' faces, the blurred lights, the darkness, the music coming in and out, uh, the use of color where the London scenes are sort of cold and, and, and washed of color darker, uh, whereas the scenes in the childhood home are generally much brighter, warm colors, etc. Uh, it is at the same time cathartic and heartbreaking to see Adam essentially trying to have a self-therapy by imagining all these interactions with his parents that he wished he had. In a sense, the entire film is about conversations with ghosts, uh, but I think it's done very subtly, uh, where you can kind of interpret this however you wish, a, whether it's ghosts, hallucinations, or simply a writer's imagination, or even just a person's imagination, writing the dialogues he wished he had, uh, which is the theory that I subscribe to. And seeing as it is a partly autobiographical um, story for the director, Andrew Hay, I think it would have been very easy for the film to feel self-serving uh, or arrogant or stuck up, but somehow it doesn't. And I think, I think that's in large part due to the performances. Andrew Scott is spectacular in this film. I mean, he's a great actor in everything I've seen him in, but this is a real tour de force. He, the way his entire being emanates loneliness and sadness and grief and then the way he slowly begins to open up to Harry and, and also the way he, he begins to revert back to his childhood self in the scenes with his parents it's just mesmerizing I know it's a role that will stay with me for a long time um, and then you have the supporting cast Mescal is great, Foy is great, Bell is fantastic especially in the scene where he discusses Adam's sexuality with him and how he never came to console the boy when he was crying in his bedroom at night that's a really heartbreaking scene it you know it's all about this desperate permeating need to belong to feel something for others and to to feel loved and seen and understood and appreciated and again it's executed very well uh, also there's a thing which happens towards the end of the film which I don't want to spoil but I feel this will be very divisive for people um, I was very surprised by that choice uh, but I think it thematically just fits so so well uh, it puts a wonderfully tragic bow on the entire story um, I loved it I think it's a great movie uh, and it managed to really subvert my expectations with how much it wasn't just a gay romance how much it was a this whole wide exploration of human condition uh, somehow really relatable even though I'm not gay and I didn't lose my parents. Uh, beautiful film.